It's Pete, Mindwise Man's channel, aka Maverick Outdoors. And you can see I'm just out for a little brief walk on a Saturday afternoon and just a bit do a bit of a tally up with a review on a bit of kit that I've been using indoors and outdoors for a couple of weeks now. And it's a hand crank, also battery operated and solar powered torch, radio, Bluetooth speakers alarm but I'll take you through the spec of it on each individual item of this really little useful lightweight unit. So as you can see on the reverse side you've got the slide lid where you can insert three AA batteries for backup or the self-charging battery that's inside. You can also see it has a handle which inserts into the recess behind the actual front face of the radio and on top, just under the handle as I move it out of the way, you can see the solar panel which obviously recharges the fitted permanent battery that's inside depending on whether you use the hand crank or whether you actually charge it up with a USB cable but I'll tell you more about that in a moment. And as far as knowing it's charging you can see the little red light within the radio frequency settings just there so I know that power is actually coming in to the solar panel and it was also shine when I hand crank it and what I'm going to do is actually cover just slightly with my hand and it's not actually light coming through that actual little red light registers whether there's power coming through so I take my hand slightly away and then you can see the red light come on again albeit the solar panel actually charges at a slower rate compared to the rev speed of cranking the recharging handle that's also inserted in the back so you can see the crank handle is safely flush with the rear surface but just pull it out from the underneath it just hinges out that's a little holding, it's a sort of little tiny mini turn handle so that when you obviously turn it to crank and charge so I'm just putting my hand slightly over the solar panel and then you're going to see the red light come on when I actually turn the crank handle. So the unit is either charged by the crank handle or if the power's down and you want to put three AA batteries in you can do that or obviously the solar panel at the top. You can also charge it via the USB cable, which has also got a mini cable plug on the end of it, which actually comes with a unit. The lid comes in at about 45 centimeters long, approximately. One end has the normal large size USB plug. And you can see it's easy to see against my trousers as I turn it. The other end has the mini USB plug. So if you want to use the unit actually to charge something else like your phone or a small USB connected torch or even sort of charge battery type devices that um, are pocket size, you can actually charge those types of units as well. So external charging, USB is plugged in and then that would fit into any other mini USB plug device that you might have. Then of course the other way round, 
the other small mini socket is if you're going to actually charge back into this unit, which I've actually done via my uh, phone lead. Where in the UK the USB socket would fit into the back of the three pin plug that you plug into the mains, then the rest of the lead comes out, then you've got the mini USB to go into your phone. I use that same lead to actually charge the radio. So I'd left this plugged in the mains just under 24 hours and I thought right from a day's charge from it being absolutely flat so there was no power in this whatsoever charging it up from my phone lead and then what I did I knew that the radio unit was virtually must have been fully powered and then I plugged it into my flat totally 0% battery power phone and it charged it up just under 45%, it was about 43, 44% from my phone being flat to actually using this to charge my phone from this being fully charged. So it's good backup for phone or any sort of communication that takes in a small mini USB connection plug socket. I found that method a little bit more effective, especially if you want to use this to charge something else. But of course you can plug this in say to a phone or another unit as I was saying with a small USB socket and then continue to hand crank and obviously it will get the power in but it's not as practical as maybe having this charged up to start with and then maybe using some of the power from this if you know you don't need it for some of the other uh, items that are included in this radio unit so if you're charging from this into something else you switch that to the right hand side well the other side central is off and here is an emergency siren it speaks for itself really The reception aerial pulls out from the back and then extends. And then to switch the radio on, just simply that's also the volume control. I'll turn the volume virtue up to maximum, then I'll just turn the tuning handle as it goes from right to left. Going through channels. And you also have a multi-selection slide switch which can select different wave bands on the radio and while scanning through with the dial I've come across quite some foreign language um, channels because obviously I'm based in the UK European and even sort of Middle Eastern type accents and languages so it's quite a powerful reception once the aerial's up if you do want to get more sort of international radio stations and you can see on the top in line parallel with the solar panel there's a little SD music card slot so you can actually put that in then select the switch all the way along to where it says music switch it on and it will play back whatever was in your little card that you've put in that slot also whilst playing back you can either fast forward the tracks And then this one, you can put it on pause or play. If you want to use the Bluetooth device, say you've got music on your phone or another portable device and you want to connect it with this radio torch unit, then you need to make sure that there's nothing in the small music card slot. Turn the radio on and then slide it into the same position where it was to play the music back on the SD card. That's taken out. If you want to keep it on there, or if you're going back onto the radio if you want it to connect to the Bluetooth there's a little Bluetooth logo there you push it forward and then you'll hear a voice confirming I'm going to switch the radio on Bluetooth mode and then you get whatever device to actually um, sense and pick up the connection so you can actually play external units on this radio as you would do anything else that you know how to use via Bluetooth. So let's have a recap. I'll switch it on, which you would need for anything, whether it's the SD card or the radio and also Bluetooth. Turn the volume up a bit because now it's started to rain. I'm glad I picked up my basher so um, I could actually start my walk. And then finally, all the way along to either register for the SD card or Bluetooth take that out. And you heard her voice as I was speaking. So as I said, I've been using it actually for, no, over two weeks, must be about three weeks now, a couple of outdoors activities. 
um, but I wanted to actually test it, do a trial run, uh, see how it functioned, then I could do a sort of full review as I'm doing now, so that it's more of an in-depth specification as to what you can expect. I love it, it's really lightweight, it's got so many different things on it, albeit it's only a small sort of solar uh, device, but it's not over technical, you know, it's really simple, lightweight. Right, let's get onto the torch, and then what's classified as the reading light. It's quite a bright LED panel that actually flips out from this end. And then you can see the LED panel, which has got 11 LED bulbs on it. And it's got a nice equal spreading resonating light. And then the other end is the torch, which is more of a sort of a straight beam with a slight sort of what I would call a corona effect, a little bit of light on the outer circle. So we've got the slide switch just here, whereby the torch, I'll switch it to the left, and there you can see the torch light. Put it to off, then switch it to the right, which is the LED panel. So what I'll do is something I did previously, which is a nighttime scenario of actually using the lights in the pitch black. So here we are, it's night time. I'm indoors, which means there's less chance of any external light getting into the environment that I'm in. And I'm just standing at the bottom of a stairwell and I'm going to put the LED part of the light system on. So you can see it's a pretty reasonable light using the LED section. And I'll switch that off. And in the exact same position at the bottom of the stairwell, I'm going to put the actual torch on, which obviously is the single lens effect of lighting. So you can see obviously it's a brighter beam which can actually focus on a specific area and you can see it's quite a bright light so it's a really good effect from both of the lighting systems so you can see a direct effect straight away from turning on the torch and then I'm going to turn that round and then switch it on then to the LED light you can see that more ambient light straight off and once again I'm just going to turn it round so the light is coming towards me where I'm standing switch on the other one and you can see that's a slightly different more of a white light more direct with the torch beam so the fold out handle handy to use if you're in transit with it shining the torch or wanting the LED lighting to uh, illuminate any area or any activity that you're doing but when you're not using it I will just put it away so it's safe so when you hand crank charge it, the handle's out the way and then what you would do is hold it in a manner where obviously nothing gets in the way of turning the handle. I've found the best way is this. A good strong grip. The torch end being away from me and then turning the crank handle the length actually of the unit rather than turn it backwards because it's less stable. There's more rigidity and firmness of actually turning it on the turbine when you're actually pushing into the length of the radio. You can experiment with it to find out even more so, you know, how long a charge would last for. Um, I would say the torch will last the longest and the LED might sort of start to fade but charging it in these sort of conditions where it's overcast now where I am near the edge of the woods um, the sky's grey I've actually kept this in my windowsill on a day similar today when it's been very overcast and the little red light has come on on the radio frequency panel so I know it's charging obviously maybe not as powerful as if the sun is directly out but the fact it's sensitive enough not just to need direct sunlight any sort of daylight even when I've had it indoors on a shelf I've noticed the red light is just coming on very very slightly um, knowing that there is a trickle charge going through I left it on the windowsill for approximately I'd say about five or six hours 
and I did a light test. I have a, had everything else obviously switched off, but I turned the torch on, and that experiment lasted for about four hours. Then I did the same thing again, put the solar panel near to a window for about four or five hours, and then at night switched on the LED, and that lasted for about four or five hours as well. So it works out approximately every hour, thereabouts that the solar panel is exposed to light. You'll probably get, I would say, range it from half hour to an hour maximum of power to actually have a light source. When I've turned the crank handle for about a minute and a half to two minutes, a nice steady pace, so if you turn it sort of once every second, so you're doing about uh, 60 revolutions per minute, thereabouts, nothing slower than that. Obviously don't go too fast, otherwise it will get a little awkward with the handle. At round about that pace for a minute and a half to two minutes, and that charged up the unit where again I got about a good six, seven hours with a torch and then when I did it again when it went flat did the same procedure and also the LED lasted for about the same time so you can expect the torch and the LED whichever one you're going to use for to last um, and illuminate for about the same time each. Also that minute and a half to two minute turn will give round about about the same time and the rate but obviously if you were going out for a bit of a longer time and you wanted to charge this up fully then I'd probably suggest actually charging it from the mains over 24 hours then if you know that you can once you've got used to how to use this you're then going to be able to calculate if you have the radio on for a certain period of time what amount of power you'll have then left if you switch the radio off for then the torch to work or even power that's left when you're not using it to then use the radio unit to actually charge your phone or something like that. So it's a convenient, nice little unit, does what it says on the instructions. Once you get used to it, you're then going to know really sort of instinctively um, how you would use it over a long period of time if you're out on a base camp or out on your travels for maybe three, four days, or if you were just going to use it for an overnighter then obviously you've got more power in the unit to last you for that short period of time and you can do more things with the torch radio. It also comes with a really easy to follow fold out manual. As you can see it easily folds out with some images and an index key relates to how to use it. So I'm really impressed with this little unit multifunction device. You can use it on your outdoors activities or have it as your preparedness kit indoors, domestic, outdoors, even have it in your car or just for leisurely activities. Nice little bit of kit also for children to get them interested in multifunction devices where actually it's not down to an app, you've actually got to control what you're doing to actually make the unit work. So I've put a link in the description box below this video so you can link onto it and get more information, see more images of the device which actually expands a little bit more on this review that I've done. So I'm going to actually probably knock up a brew then uh, strike down the basher and then knowing that I'll uh, make a little walk through the woods and I might even just stop off and uh, switch the radio on, knowing it's powered up because it's got a bit of daylight coming through the solar panel. And on that note, I'll say thanks for watching, really appreciate your interest. Hope you found this bit of kit review video of interest. And if you're new to the channel, do check out my other videos. There's many videos all based on wild camping, canoeing, prep survival, that sort of thing and the odd bit of kit review when I find something of real interest that I think maybe my channel viewers and video followers will find of use. So again, thanks for watching. Catch you in another video soon. Cheers. Take care.